Hey guys, it's Jesse V, and today we're going to be continuing our It's Near You series. I know it's one of your favorite series. We're getting through all of the states, and then eventually we're going to be going to Canada and all the rest of the world. I'm getting to you, don't worry. <laughs> today we're going to be talking about all the creepy places and urban legends in Oregon. And trust me, there are so many, it's insane. But right before we get into that, if you have not noticed, I'm wearing the other layered necklace. In my previous video, I was wearing the first one. This is the other one. I don't even know which one is like my favorite. I love them both so much. But these are available on our merch website. I have linked it down below. We do have a limited quantity of these because we've never done them before. So if you would like one before they sell out, definitely check it out. But I love, like this is all one necklace. It has like a choker part. It has this like cute little star. And then it has this long pendant. I love it so much. If you would like one, I have linked it down below. That is my announcements for today. All right, let's get right into this video about the creepy places in Oregon. First, we have what's called Hesetta Head House's Gray Lady. That's almost a tongue twister. The biggest hawk just swooped down and picked an animal up on our- <gasps> Is that a bald eagle? That might be a bald eagle. That's the biggest bird I've ever seen in my life. It just swooped down and took something out of our lawn. I'm just gonna make sure my dogs are inside. All right, that was insane. That was so, anyway, sorry guys, sorry. All right, let's talk about this lighthouse. The lighthouse was constructed in 1894 and it is believed that at some point, a woman lost her daughter at that location, possibly falling from the cliffs. Some people even say that the child's grave is somewhere around this lighthouse. Now the woman was known as Rue and she was very heartbroken by the loss of her child, obviously. And people think that she eventually succumbed to her grief and passed away. But to this day, Rue has never really left the premise. Since 1950, there have been many accounts of lighthouse keepers telling tales of screams and wailing heard in the night. Things are constantly moved around the lighthouse keeper's room. Things constantly go missing or appear out of nowhere. Things are just very, very strange in this lighthouse. Rue has even shown herself on occasion. It's very rare to actually see her, but she's described as having long silver hair. She's wearing a gray dress, and that's why she is sometimes referred to as the great lady. A man was once cleaning one of the windows in the attic and he glanced in the window and saw a reflection of the great lady. And when he turned, he saw her floating over top of the attic floor. He was so terrified that he tried to get out as soon as possible. He ended up breaking the window and vowed to never go there ever again. Next we have the witches of Mal Her Boot. I probably said that so wrong. According to locals, this 2,661 foot inactive volcano plays host to evil spirits, which was once even a meeting point for witches. Back in the day, Native Americans used the boot as a lookout point to watch for settlers coming in in covered wagons. It is believed that many people lost their lives on this trail and their spirits just linger on, like haunting this area forever. Legend has it that Malher Boot was also once a place where witches gathered to practice dark magic. Covens met here regularly to perform bone chilling rituals and ceremonies. An even weirder thing is that local say they often see these apparitions appear as dogs in this area, like creepy ghost dogs will chase people around. Apparently even the name Malhur, which I'm probably not saying right, it actually means tragedy, misfortune, or unhappy place in French. So you know something's not right there. Next, we have the McMinnville UFO sightings. In 1950, a woman named Evelyn Trent started yelling for her husband at about 7.45 in the evening. She was feeding their rabbits in the yard of their farm when she saw it. This is a quote from her. She said, it was like a good sized parachute canopy without the strings, only silver bright mixed with bronze. It was as pretty as anything I had ever saw. She ran into the house, found her husband and their camera and they raced back into the yard. That's when they saw this wingless object floating in the sky. And the 43 year old farmer managed to take two photographs before the flying object disappeared into the evening mist. Now these photographs were published in several magazines. It was even in Life magazine and people say this is the best evidence of UFOs ever captured. They can't debunk these photos. It's so creepy. Next we have Portland Shanghai tunnels. Under the city of Portland, there's a series 
series of tunnels connecting hotels and bars to the waterfront. They were built to move supplies from boats to their basement storage unit. The tunnels were also used for illegal activities from 1850 to 1941, which resulted in the death of many people. So people say that when you go down there, you can still hear the talking and moaning and groaning and screaming from all the people who died there. So that's great. Deep within the tunnels, travelers report feeling goosebumps as if someone is watching them from the shadows. There's this story of this one man who even heard the sound of like a child whistling. And as soon as he heard that sound, he was thrown to the ground by an unknown force. When he lifted his flashlight up, he saw that nobody was behind him. And this man told everybody that he would never go there again because something in there is super, super violent. And obviously you do not want to be around that. Next, we have the legend of the bandage man. Now, this is an urban legend that has been around since the 1960s. And it may have started as a way to deter young lovers from parking in overlooks along Highway 101. The story goes that a young couple was parked in a truck somewhere near Cannon Beach. They were completely oblivious to their surroundings. They were just in the truck kissing and carrying on. And that's when the truck suddenly shifted as if someone just climbed onto the roof of their car. They looked out their rear window to find a disfigured man covered in bandages rocking the truck back and forth. This creepy man started pounding on all of the windows. So the boy had to quickly back the truck out of this overlook to get back on the highway. But apparently the couple drove for a few miles with the bandaged man still beating on the truck until he suddenly disappeared. So over the years, people complain about this man jumping onto their cars out of nowhere around this area. Sweethearts in parking lots or overlooks report seeing the bandaged man approach their car. Others say that they've seen him on the beach and walking down the side of Highway 101. Some people believe that bandaged man is the ghost of a logger who died after horrific injuries sustained while working nearby. People say he smells terrible, like of rotting flesh. And sometimes after he's attacked your car, he'll leave bloody bandages behind. So that's great. And then lastly, we have the Jansen Beach Carousel. From the 1920s until the 70s, Jansen Beach Amusement Park on Hayden Island was a widely popular tourist attraction. But there was just too many issues going on with this amusement park. There were so many fires that broke out, so many injuries and deaths that occurred here. So that's what led to the park's demise and ultimately why they closed it down. The space was then used for a mall, which actually features the park's original carousel. But back in 2012, when the mall had to go under renovations, they had to put this old carousel into storage. Now this was a massive, heavy, giant carousel. And so the strangest thing happened back in 2015. When city officials went to retrieve the old carousel to put it back in the mall, it was gone from storage. So this is like a literal mystery because it'd be so hard for someone to just take the carousel because it's so giant. You would need like the eight trucks attached to each other to even move it. So people don't know where it went and it's creepy because this storage place was looked after by security. So suddenly it was gone and ever since it disappeared, strange things have been happening like paranormal events in this area, all to do with this creepy carousel. So I don't even like carousels. I get dizzy and I want to throw up. Anyway, so guys, those are all of the creepy haunted places in Oregon. If I missed any, definitely comment them down below. Give this video a thumbs up if you want me to continue and I will eventually get to where you live. Don't forget if you would like one of the new layered necklaces, there are two styles. I have linked it down below, but I hope you guys have an awesome rest of your day and I will see you in my next video. Bye!